This year, my youngest daughter turned 15. We had planned to travel to Colombia, South America, to celebrate her birthday among family and friends, like we have done for our oldest daughter a few years back. However, 2020 had a very different plan, and I had to scramble and reinvent this occasion for the new times. Our journey started at the local mega store where we could find some fabric that wasn't very expensive. Here are the choices. I was trying to convince her to do pink, which is traditional <laughs> for us, but of course she said no, she wanted blue. I want to um, make very clear I'm not a seamstress and I have never taken a course in sewing, so my first go-to is always YouTube. I went ahead and watched, I think, probably 15 videos in different bowl making or gown making <laughs> DIYs. Um, this is a very inexpensive baby blue um, fabric. I made a circle skirt with um, a YouTube tutorial and this is what the base looked like. Um, that's my baby. <laughs> And after this, I started following the directions on how to make a petticoat. Um, so I made strips of um, that tool fabric in different colors. I measured them and there was a lot of math involved. <laughs> and if, if, even if I wanted it to, I don't think I could explain how this was done. I, like I said, I watched a medium videos um, to be able to, to get it kind of right. Um, these quinceanera parties are usually, or the quince parties, are usually to tell people in society that your baby is not a baby anymore and that she has entered womanhood. I struggled a lot with the idea of having a party for to tell people that my daughter is ready to get married or to be presented in society. But at the same time, I want them to have my daughter. I want my daughters to have some of the wonderful things that I had in my childhood. So we talked a lot about the origins of these parties and what they meant then and what they can mean for us. And like I said, we couldn't go to Colombia because of 2020 and all of the craziness. But we did something here at home uh, with my parents and her sister and with the people who love her and the people who needed it to be here anyway. This was so hard, trying to get all of the two bunched up. Um, I'm pretty sure there's got to be some kind of way to do this in an easier fashion. For me, was just there were so many times that I just cried. But it got done on time. <laughs> I don't know how. And she was very, very happy, which is what um, matters to me. Um, I have this uh, there she is and as you can tell the waist is still a little bigger but she liked it because she doesn't like anything too tight anyway I always struggle a little bit with trying to keep as much of my culture and as much of Alex's culture and as much of the American culture and some kind of equilibrium and balance here at home um, I hope I'm doing a good job and I know that she was very happy that day and there she is my little princess um, but yeah that's a battle that we that I struggle with every day trying to be Colombian enough and American enough <laughs> I've discovered that being an immigrant is a very personal experience um, even though we share a lot of the same circumstances and maybe some of the privileges and some of the hardship, everyone who comes to the United States uh, as an immigrant, even you know, as a child, as a teenager, such as myself, or when you're older, even though we have that common thread of experiences, um, there's so much that it is very personal. I have spoken with a lot of people who decide to invest a lot of time and money in getting rid of the accent. I know that I was very, very obsessed with that for a while, whether or not they learn how to speak English. Um, 
and how proficient they speak the language, um, whether or not they speak their, their native language at home exclusively or not, um, a million things. And um, one of the bigger things for us or for myself was whether or not I was going to become a citizen. There was, when we first came to this country, there was an overwhelming sensation that eventually I was going to go back home. <laughs> and the more years that passed, the idea of home became more and more blurred for me. Um, I, um, I think of this as home. Um, this is the place where I learned how to drive, the first place where I had my first fear, serious relationship, um, the first place where I had a job, where I became a professional, where I became a mother, where um, just all of those first experiences that make you who you are, this is where I've had them. And I have lived longer here than I ever did back home. <laughs> and so you have this thing in your heart where you have two homes and there is a point where no matter where I am, I don't feel Colombian enough anymore. Um, so much time has passed between the time I came and now that even the people that I left not behind, but that are in Colombia still, they have grown up and they have grown up with their own set of experiences and, and hardship and happiness. And all of those experiences are very different than mine. And I feel like for a lot of people, I will never be American enough. <laughs> so you find yourself in this place where you are like right smack in the middle. And for a long time, it was easier to blame others on, for that feeling. It was easier to blame the person that is asking you, what did you say or repeat yourself or the Colombian person that is telling you, but we don't do things like that. Why are you doing it like that? Or a million examples. And, and instead of looking at myself and, and realizing why is this bothering me, um, I was always looking outside and thinking, why are they asking me that? <laughs> and so uh, in this, this year, who has been a catalyst for change and transition, um, Alex and I decided to become citizens. And I studied a lot and studied a lot. And my daughters helped me uh, asking questions and asking of that. And that process is something else. Um, it is expensive or it was expensive for us and it takes a while and you have to have enough knowledge to we did this without the aid of a lawyer and so um it it takes a lot of work um we did our test and and we did our ceremony this month and i am very excited i look at this as i don't have to prove anyone anything anymore I don't have to prove that I love my Colombian roots and that I treasure my time um, as uh, my childhood in there. And I don't have to prove anyone how American I am anymore either because I am a productive member of society. I give as much as I can. I study as much as I can. And now I'm going to participate in the, poli in the political process in a much more edifying way than just uh, complaining or liking things on Facebook. <laughs> so to sum it all up, I believe that the experiences that we have make us who we are and no matter how long or how short the path to big things are, um, it's always okay it, and, and it is in your own time. It took me, um, I believe, close to 30 years to become a citizen. <laughs> and for some that are watching this, you're gonna say, oh, gosh, why did you wait so long? And others are gonna say, why did you do it? <laughs> but for me, this was the perfect time and I am happy. I'm happy that things happen the way that they do. And definitely I have my own pace for things. For some things I am, 
I want to get them done super fast. These took a lot more motivation and a lot more thought process. Um, but I am happy that I finally did it. And I feel like I was ready. And um, I'm an American. And I'm also always a Colombian. And I am a human being. And I'm happy about it. Um, before I go, I want to remind you that you are beautiful, you are worthy, and you are deserving of happiness and love. And I love you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.